Well, welcome back to the shop for the final build episode on the Tumalisa. Let's talk about it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you stopping by and I just, I'm, I'm thrilled that I could share this project with you. The Tuma Lisa is done. Uh, the painting is all done. The uh, landing gear is done. Now, what did I do on the landing gear? Uh, well, the landing gear needed some fairings and all I simply did was uh, take a, a paper pattern from the plans and mirror it. So basically a butterfly and then folded it over the leg and used some Gorilla Glue and some clamps to hold it there. And then just some spray paint, really nothing fancy. Um, the reason that I did that is because uh, any foam board that I might glue onto those legs, because they would see a lot of loads and they bend and flex and stuff, I didn't want to risk them coming loose and falling off. Uh, so that's the reason that I did that. Uh, it's also the lighter solution. Uh, given that we're adding weight to the airplane, I didn't want to add a whole lot of weight in terms of the hot glue. Uh, this was a lot lighter in terms of a weight option. Uh, the paint uh, is all applied by hand with a brush, uh, except for the base colors. So the gray, as well as the, the beige. The beige is a camo, uh, a camouflage uh, khaki that I got at a, at a hardware store. The, the cowl is actually done with uh, originally a, a, a gray. It was an old can that sprayed kind of splotchy. And I used that as a base and then uh, did a flat automotive primer over top so that it, it, it maintains a pretty uh, matte look. Uh, but it, it has a little bit of texture if you get up close to it because of that splotchy base layer. It's, it's kind of fun. Aside from that, the roundels are the Swedish roundels that are scale for this era. Now, this airplane was not a fighter. It was a fighter trainer. So that's why you don't have necessarily the, the clear cut markings that you might see in, in another World War I aircraft. Um, this was solely to train pilots. And uh, so it identifies as the country and has large uh, mark, number markings on it for training purposes. Uh, so that's what I've done. Uh, again, these were painted in the field, uh, as most of these airplanes of this era were. They were not painted in a shop or of any kind, and usually not very skilled people <laughs> uh, painting these. Um, so, you know, the, the roundels are not perfectly round. They're splotchy. They're faded. There's going to be chipping. The I really like the chipping effect that the numbers have on, on the airplane. And the way that I did that was I created vinyl masks. I have a vinyl cutter. I created vinyl masks and then uh, did not prep the surface at all. I left it pretty smooth and then apl applied the mask, applied the paint and heated it to, to get it to dry quickly and then immediately pulled the mask off. And that's what gives me that effect. It, it, it pulls a little bit of paint with it uh, because there's not a whole lot of time for the, the paint to chemically or mechanically adhere to the, the, the surface of the paint. So that's how I do that. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, the tail is just simply masked off with masking tape, a vertical line, nothing really hard there. Um, again, uh, the, the, these, uh, roundel patterns were provided by Aerodrome RC. So it was just a matter of, of printing it out and cutting it out and doing some basic tracing. And literally like all of this was done by hand. There was no masking done on this. So up close, you can see the imperfections and at a distance, it looks pretty nice. And that's the kind of effect that I like in these airplanes is you can really see the personalization in them. I think lastly, what I need to do here is I need to acknowledge those in our community who contributed to this project. And that is one thing that I, I really want to drive home is this kind of a build is really a group build. And that's what I, what I say, welcome everyone to the project. I really do mean it because this is not my project. It's a community project. Um, the, you know, the 3D printed wheels, I did not design those. I 3D printed them. 
but Kilroy07 on Thingiverse de designed these wheels, and I scaled them to my particular application. I printed the TPU, I printed the PETG, uh, I assembled it, but he did all the work up front to, to make those. Same with Dan Sponholtz. Uh, thank you, Dan, for the, uh, the control horns. Again, on Thingiverse, free to download. Amazing resource. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, for the, a lot of people really enjoyed the, the cone generator idea for the rounding of the cowl. Again, not my idea. I didn't know how to do that. I, I reached out to some friends and they said, you know, I don't do, I don't do these, these foam board builds. How do you do this? And they're like, um, cone generator. So Adrian, Adrian Chupp and Jared Rotenberger. Thank you. Thank you guys for that awesome conversation where you just taught me how to do it in just a couple of minutes. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Last and certainly, certainly not least, I do want to thank Master Airscrew again for reaching out to me about uh, contributing a propeller for a project. Master Airscrew has been making propellers since before I was born. Um, and that's really saying something. It's a testament to their quality of products and the longevity of their reputation. And I highly encourage you to consider their props for your next project. I think this prop looks the part. Um, I have not flown this yet. I'm excited to, and I'm excited to really uh, see what this prop can do, how it sounds, how it performs, uh, along with the, the motor and ESC, obviously it's a system. But uh, I'm, I'm excited to try something new. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much, Master Airscrew, again, for helping with this project. So while I've not flown this airplane yet, um, I have honestly no idea when I will. So this may be the last video of the series for a while now, uh, just because we're in January now. And uh, usually January and February is when we get all the snow in my area. So I, I genuinely don't know. We had winds last night gusting up to 35 miles an hour. Really, I don't know when I'm going to be able to fly this, but you can be rest assured that I will have it on video. I will post it and it will be raw like most of my videos are. I don't try to include much music or anything like that. I try to give you the flight, my thoughts, and pretty much that's it because I want you to experience what I experience and some of my thoughts, because some of my thoughts as a, as someone who maidens a lot of airplanes, it might pro provide some useful information for you. So until next time, guys, uh, I really look forward to seeing what some of you all are working on for this uh, really fun event we're going to have at Flight Fest. If you want more information, there's a link in the description along with some other links. Uh, it's titled link -arama. But you can check out some of my other works in uh, on Instagram. I post there a lot so that uh, people have an idea of some, you know, little things that I'm working on here and there. Um, until next time, guys, keep working on your flying works of art. <laughs>